been working on something <coughs> with the objective of sort of simplifying driver maintenance and development a little bit. And uh, they call it the Applied Private Net Library. And over the years, uh, what drivers have had to support has gotten a little more complicated from the days when it was just PI and a buffer and having a linked list that you pulled off of and then reading a PIO. So we have, you know, DMA dealt with for a while, SMP with locking, and uh, made things a little bit more complicated for maintainers. And then we had multi queue which I actively made worse by just throwing in a random API around that, over that. And then there's QS, which people are banging their heads against in terms of like some queues have different notions of priority. Uh, the end result is that we have the huge amounts of boilerplate just being copy pasted from driver to driver to driver to driver in terms of start managing queues, allocating queues, allocating uh, hardware rings, et cetera, et cetera, all that do exactly the same thing with slightly different variations on alignment, you know, limitations of where packet headers have to live up. And locking isn't something that many maintainers seem to have sort of an intuitive knack for. And they either don't do it well from a performance standpoint or don't do it right at all. Um, and, uh, you know, we frequently don't understand the full state machine until years later and people are no longer maintaining the driver. So anyway, the objective is to have a true driver API where we have actually its own stack, just as you don't have, at least on FreeBSD, you don't have the whole wireless state machine in every driver. You pull that out and you have it at 802.11. The other notion of this is, I mean, what it has to accomplish is a lot less, but the driver only really has to do things for the network stack is stick a packet on, it goes back to just sticking a packet on a hardware queue and taking a buffer off of it. It's much more like it was in the 4.4 days, you know, in terms of from the driver's standpoint. It's much more complicated in terms of the driver initializing the state. You know, drivers nay today are routinely larger than Unix 6 was. I mean, 10,000 lines of code is not a lot of code for a driver. But that was, you know, early, you know, Lions Unix was 10,000 lines of code, maybe 9,500 lines, which is probably work thereabouts. Yeah, right. And uh, so anyway, but in terms of how they interact with the OS, I mean, basically the point of contact should be a lot less, much simpler. And I mean, there'll be many more functions, but there'll be have much more narrow definitions. Um, so managed to excise about 2,000 lines of code on EM, 1.6 on IHDVE. Um, it allows us to share cores between ports right now. Every driver, when it's managing RX, has its own iThread. So basically letting the scheduler decide, you know, when you get to take your packets off. Whereas with this, you have a single thread and basically round robin between the driver's receiver teams and after a certain number of packets or a certain amount of time. And they basically don't have to go through the scheduler to decide, you know, which iThread to run. I mean, much better CPU utilization um, when you have large numbers of ports all sharing the same port. You have a same, you can do one optimization and have in one place and have it automatically benefit all the drivers. You don't have to go stick and prefetch in, you know, three different drivers when you're doing DQ. And I'm hoping that it makes things easier. I mean, we'll see. Um, famous last words. Um, the plan is to support all of the 40 gig EA drivers, we don't have solar flare on there right now because Isolate doesn't have a vendor relationship with them, but um, somebody who does, or the foundation or whatever, we can stick a card at IX. We basically support all of them, basically to validate that the API does in fact generalize across all of those, support a subset of the 10 gig cards. I mean, I mean I actually have ported it, ported CXGB, but I mean, CXGB is so well maintained, why mess with it? Um, but, you know, Intel Q-Logic uh, cards used by Isilon. And uh, any questions before I move to the next one? Yep. Uh, so are, you, are there thoughts on supporting mixed mode drivers, like older things that do like old I.O. and other stuff? Well, in, in principle, 
you, I mean, you could support polling. I mean, that isn't that isn't really a priority. I mean, but I mean, in, in principle, that's kind of what you're doing with it. You basically you have a single task queue thread that's going through and basically doing. Uh, actually, actually, I'm talking about old, uh, older cards that do not use uh, uh, descriptor reads, and you actually have to do like like do strings to IO like um, old like IO port writes. PIO? Uh, no, I mean I don't see the benefit to doing that. I mean basically, <laughs> I see these things. Those, I mean I, not really geared towards hardware that's being aged out to be honest. So, um, because I'm not even going after. I'm only done EM just because that's what I EM where is is in my heart, my desktop support, but not even going after any of the many gig E networks. So it's more sort of moving forward. Um, what we want to support. It's not. Because it's basically a library that sits between IFNET and the driver. So even if it doesn't go in the tree as some guaranteed supported thing, any given driver can use it and basically hide a lot of the complexity. And they could all or they could all share one instance of it. So it's a uh, I mean if someone's motivated and wants to do it, that's fine, but that's not what I'm interested in. And so that kind of gets to the next thing is when you're churning a lot of driver code, you're going to have a lot of system crashes. So um, basically, I took the kernel, or most of it, and turned it into a shared object. And why would you want to do that? Well, mainly for people like me, I'm great, um, developers, um, kind of a niche thing, but it's still kind of interesting. For me, I find it frustrating even just Booting, rebooting my VM or VM because I didn't initialize a pointer. You know, yeah, I do that sometimes. DDB is nice, but it's kind of limited in terms of what you can do um, chasing data structures um, that aren't sort of pre programmed. VM remote debugging can be a headache for a wide variety of reasons. So, this is similar to RUMP. Uh, FreeBS NetBSD is RUMP, and Linux is user mode Linux, but the objective isn't truly on fidelity more on simplicity and performance. So the objective to run unmodified drivers on real hardware. I mean the, the threads are pinned, traps are lightweight, so um, the actual kernel portion should run essentially at native speeds. Um, it's not unlike a Zen driver domain except for it's got a crippled VM, so you don't have user space. Um, the user space actually runs on the host and communicates over, you know, the IPC with the guest. Um, kernel support is pretty minimal. There's some changes to the base code. I do, in order to allow physical address lookup, I actually do map, map the linear page tables inside the user address space, but have a um, censored mapping that's just the user's addresses. And I added a flag to AST so that on return, we can actually trigger a trap if it's not possible to do it in the context of the driver filter. Um, most of the support is just in the pass-through driver. We pin threads and map them with virtual CPUs, and uh, a filter intercepts the hardware interrupts and uh, sets up a trap frame, or IPIs, and uh, has ASD set up the trap frame. Interrupt masking and enabling basically reuses the event channel shared page interface, although the API is much, much, much simpler. I mean, needs it less. Anyway, it's pretty crippled at the moment. Only have interrupts started working uh, the before yesterday. Haven't had time to basically get a root disk up and going, but it's not a lot of work going forward in terms of what I want to support. Um, want to reduce the possibility for foot shooting by adding the IMU and uh, some PCI config write filtering. Um, and I think I can get better performance out of the IMU than Constantine talked about expecting by basically having fixed mappings of the MBEF clusters and then allocating from those. So there's actually no mapping overhead for networking. And it basically only arc buffers that you, from ZFS that you would map on demand or file UFS. Anyhow, thank you. Questions? Is there actually enough space in the IOM and you to map the whole external envelope array? The clusters? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I would assume it's basically a page table, so basically you decide a priori what to, I mean, I don't know how big it is. I mean, basically if you're mapping two megabyte pages, I mean, you basically map one very large page and you divvy that up into clusters. I mean, it depends on the IOM implementation. 
It's not sure if it, it's yeah, I, I don't know. That's that's what I want to try. I mean, basically, because even because even one because I presume you can like map a single uh, arc buffer, which is 128k, and that there is is 64 clusters. So I mean, if you can map, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. You mean me? Me? That's a good question. How many other static clusters? Yeah, that, that, that could quickly be a little bottleneck. I don't know how good the IOMU is these days. I mean, eventually it should be able to map, you know, large amounts of clusters. But the current hardware is always going to dodge. So. Anyway, are the IOMU still architecture specific? I know AMD historically have better support. I'm not familiar with it. The only thing is the. I mean, there's there's a couple chips. I mean, I'm actually not familiar with what. Oh, no one's actually using it. Constantine Belisov put in support end of last year, beginning of this year, and nothing's turned it on. It'd be nice to actually have something driving that. I mean, because in principle, drivers aren't going to DMA all over the place, and so there's nothing really pushing that. Beehive wants to move to it, but you know, it's kind of a chicken and egg thing, I and mean, so no one's using it because there's the you know, the perceived mapping overhead. And I'm hoping that if you're they're hoping it can map enough that we don't have to worry about that. Right. Thank you.